All right, we're starting on the installation of the um, Super Ride 2 suspension from Heights. So we started by removing this lip down through this flat area back to here because this is going to ultimately get boxed with new metal and there's actually going to be a, uh, a recessed area cut out of here. And then what happened is since this frame isn't the world's strongest and it's just several plates held together from the factory, as you can see here it released as we cut that lip off. So what we're going to do now is pinch and touch a few spots to close it and then Joe's going to lay a nice bead and we're going to rebox it and then clean it off. That way before we put the new metal on, it's going to have a nice tight fit. And the metal that's going to go on is over here. So as you can see, we're going to ultimately be plating that rail and it's got a divot cut out. And so you get both the uh, outer shell, then you get the inner shell that's going to go like that with that divot and then a bottom plate so that whole box gets rebuilt. So I thought you guys would find it interesting. All right, as you guys can see, we're getting ready to tack the new frame pieces in place. And this is what we were talking about where this new coilover system has a notch cut out in the old frame. But even though it looks skinny and scary, the fact is this metal is a much heavier gauge than what was from the factory and there'll be a plate, plate, plate. It's completely encased. So have at it, Joe. All right, the whole rear section has been epoxy primed over the bodywork, so grease and stuff like that won't hurt it while we're doing all the suspension work. The front rail have been cut, modified, and now we have successfully installed the, the cutouts for the coilovers and uh, the new metal that reinforces the whole front. While we have the radiator support off, I took the liberty to start going ahead and straighten out all the uh, fender aprons and the firewall, welding in holes anywhere that there's gonna be uh, a hole we didn't need anymore has been welded in and I'm now starting to do some of the body work to smooth and finish it all out. All right, so as you can see, Joe Mann, by the way, his name is appropriate, the man, because when we first built the shop, I was attacked by a tarantula, and Joe reached down, picked it up in his hand, and flung it outside the shop. I would have actually had a heart attack because I'm arachnophobic, beyond belief. So Joe is squaring this up, and as you guys can see, what it's gonna do is it's gonna brace the front here from underneath. So we have the car flipped over on the rotisserie, and then this front will get plated here, the ends will get plated here, and then there's going to be a lateral brace approximately halfway down, and when you flip it back over, it's all going to be a nice flat surface, and if we ever needed to, we could actually plate it and then make a, an area to set things if we needed them. But this will be a lot stronger than the parts that came off from the factory, which obviously we no longer need with a... Uh, a Super Ride Heights Mustang suspension. So these are gone and in with the new and it'll look a lot cleaner and a lot more elegant. Well, the uh, A-brace has been welded in from underneath and a couple more welds to go and some cleanup work and she's in and I think you guys can see this is gonna be structurally a lot better than it was from the factory and again, as I mentioned, this also gives us space we need to to uh, build a deck for some componentry. Not that I anticipate it, but you never know. All right, so here we have uh, Alan Coaster and Joe. Joe is TIG welding the shock towers in from Detroit Speed uh, since it's very thin metal. And right now what he's doing is just doing spots all around to position it because we decided to cut it and flush mount it directly into the, uh, the thin fender aprons. So I'll take it around and show you from the other side. And so you can see here that the fender apron is, or the uh, shock tower cover is actually recessed into the fender apron flush. And when that's all welded in, I'll just do a very, very light amount of body work on it. It'll be like it was made in from the factory. The fender aprons and all the holes and all the new metal have all been placed in and has body filled in and smoothed out to get this car show ready even some of the weld joints that are going to be visible. And so next step will be to epoxy primer this whole thing and then do final body work on top of the epoxy primer. And then of course what we've got to do next is figure out what are we going to do about this little apron thing here that is just beat all the crap, bent up and full of all kinds of seam sealer. And it is not needed at all. There will be no export brace, no shock tower supports, any of that. So this is all going to be a very clean open engine bay area. We'll post that in another video. Well, I said we would wait till the next video, but 
I went ahead and tackled it. So here's what we've got now. That whole lip has been replaced with a fresh piece of metal. I cut the old lip way back, but left enough that the pinch wells from the factory are still in place and got it nice and straight. So it looks great. Come at it from this angle. Yep, she's looking really good.